Hello, this is Max Drake. I want to talk about this um, compliance um, app. So I'm using this uh, Glide app to actually do some data gathering. And basically it's got, it's, it's doing an inspection report on properties. And after doing a report, um, it needs to go and send an automated report to owners of those properties to say which bits are meeting the code and which bits aren't so that they can actually say, do you want to repair those? So currently they're actually going around with a piece of pencil and paper and they're actually going and doing all of the stuff. Then they actually have to go back to the office and start uploading that stuff onto the computer so that they can start doing some templating. Um, I actually haven't been in the Glide app um, for quite a while and um, uh, I quite like the new interface and some of the new things in there, but it has confused me a bit. Now, one of the things that got me a little bit exciting was the um, template column that was coming through. But in fact, I found it didn't actually work for me because the template column seem to be doing a internal thing for Glide. So it was actually putting information in the sheet, but then making sure that it displayed in Glide. That wasn't what I wanted with my templating. What I wanted with my templating was to gather the information from the Glide app and send it to an external report. So that was where I was in a little bit of a dilemma. So the first thing, the criteria that I was actually looking at was, a, and this is just a pure mock-up at this point in time, was to actually look at it to the point where I don't have to write in as much stuff, use as many pull down as possible so that I can do things. So what I decided to do was actually have a whole lot of lookups and straight away on the first phase have a look up for the property. So the first thing you do is we have a pull down for the property and we select a property and then we add. So straight away we can actually see which properties we've done. Um, so from there we can actually go and click on that particular property. Um, it tells us what the property is. It gives us a map of where that property is actually located. We can then click on the date and select a date to actually say when that date is done. We can do a thing of who's actually doing that inspection there. So just basic information on who's done the inspection when it was done by etc etc quite handy next one here is the one that I want to talk about there's a whole lot of different criteria that you've actually got to do you've got to do some stuff on heating standards on smoking standards on insulation standards ventilation standards moisture standards um, vent uh, draft stopping and things like that so there's a whole lot of criteria that you actually have to check so I was just mocking it up to actually see but some of the things that I needed to do was to check to see if these things met the code. So basically, you walked into a place, does it meet the code? Is it the only answer that you actually want because you've got to send a report off to somebody saying yes or no. So this one here is just saying, are there smoke detectors present? Yes. Are they working? If you go yes, um, and I'm just going to close that at the moment. If you go yes, then this will say it meets close, it meets code, and then this note will disappear. But you don't need to say anything else. That just meets code. Full stop. Let's go. Um, you've got a duty to actually go and check to see that smoke detectors are actually working in there. So you have an obligation. But let's say you have a really high ceiling and you can't reach the bloody thing. So we can actually go, don't know. So if it's don't know, then we can actually say it's failed, and then we can add a note um, couldn't reach. very high ceiling. So what we can actually do is on the report, when we send the report to the thing, we can actually say we don't, it's failed because we couldn't check it. And then they're suddenly saying, oh, well, when we get the electrician to go around next time, they're going to do it. But we've given an explanation. So when we actually do some templating for doing the reporting, that can drop in and it can then say the note. Now, if it said yes, it wouldn't give the note because you don't need it. And again, with the insulation, one of the things with insulation, that is something that's already happened and it should, everybody should actually have these for tenancies um, already compliant by July the 1st. If not, you know, you're getting fired and all the rest of the stuff. So the first thing there is in some of them is there's a certificate. So if there's a certificate, you don't have to go any further. It's got insulation in it. If it isn't, then you've got to fill out a whole lot of information on what it is about that and maybe some notes and some dimensions and some things. So if we just put yes, straight away, all the other information disappears because we don't need it. But you might want to make a note about something if you've noticed a little something that you want to add a comment. But basically, you don't need to do anything because it's there. And so that note might actually be an office note rather than something that you're sending through to the owner.
and then we come into the heating now the heating one is actually another odd one is there a heater in the living room already and then they say because now they're saying it has to be of a specific specific capacity um you you now um in this one you actually have to go to an online calculator to actually do it i was actually thinking of doing the calculation app but that's a, a different story um to be done um and this one here you can actually upload an information about a heater now the thing with a heater is a lot of the times it's got a, a a plate on the back explaining how many kilowatts it is or something like that so you may actually have to take it off the wall if it's a heat pump or something all you could do is actually just get the model number so you may need to take a photo and here's a point where you can actually just go and upload a photo so you take a photo with the camera you'd go through and upload the photo from uh, you know, this is actually going to mine but it would actually just go to an app on your phone so that you can actually pull it off from your gallery um, and then if there's some so it's, it's, it's flagging some stuff you can't actually do what you need to do on here Oh, sorry. Um, uh, yeah. But you can gather some information such that you, you, you've got some of the things that you do. Anyway, you go through all the different processes and stuff like that. So again, if there's if there's the insulation and it says uh, yes, whatever, it goes through and asks all of these questions. Now, as I was doing the mocking up, I was actually just using uh, a single tab to actually put all of this information in there just to test out a lot of the the stuff that I'm doing but basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying if there's a smoke detector there and it's working then it's passed so I'm actually using an array formula so it's only actually filling this in if there's actually a new field that's actually being created and then it's actually doing an if statement if this and if this then it's passed otherwise it's failed and if it's failed then I need to give them the explanation of why it's failed. If it's passed, I don't actually have to need anything at all. So in fact, I can actually delete that completely through there. Now, that's fine as to what it does. But what I've then got is a template over here. Now, the template is basically concatenating on a certain day on this date here. And then I have to reformat the thing itself. So I'm actually making a templating one because I found this template, as I said, is an internal focus one for actually reporting to Glide. I wanted an external one that would actually report. So I need this field filled in. Now, if it passed, I don't actually have to do any other information. But if it fails, I need to give it the note. And so it had to go and find the note. I then make it go in uppercase so that you can actually go and see what the note was. And maybe I need to do some of this in, um, uh, uh, make some of this note in, uh, italics just so that it's easier to differentiate as but here it's kind of if this if it's yes then you don't need to do anything more if it's no then this is the explanation why and then what you want us to do about it so um, something's errored off there so we'll actually just go um, copy and paste and then it's come through there and at the moment I actually haven't got it doing the array formula so I have to pull it down here and then that one there's done the reporting now this is then done my little template column based on the smoke one so that's just on the first field I with it well on the first thing that you're supposed to be doing the next thing that I'm using through here is a is a little add-on to Google Sheets called Autocrat and I've got it open through here. I've uploaded. You can just go and get it. So you can go and get the add-on through there. It's a free one. And if I just come into here, basically it has a template. So it goes and looks at all the headers that you actually have. It's got a name. Uh, you then go on to the next one. And it actually has a template. So I've got a template, which is a doc that's going through. And if you see all of these ones with the double chevrons through there, these are particular fields that it's going through and looking for. So I'm using that one through there. And it's saying that's the template that I'm doing, which is the reporting. And here's all the fields that I can go and grab based on um, what's in my area. So I can grab all of these ones of if it's a yes, no field or whatever, or there's data in those fields. And then I can pull them across into here. Now I can actually say which tab am I actually on for all these things. So I'm reporting on the property tab. I'm reporting on the buy, uh, on the buy column, on the date column, on the template smoke column, on all of those. Now those are sort of the ones that are pulling through. And I'm creating a file. And I'm just doing the date of when the first one. So it's actually just filling the date for the very first one. And I'm 
putting today's date just so that I know when those were done. Now I can then send this to a Google Docs or a PDF, but since I might want to do some editing or somebody in the office may want to do some editing or add a little bit of an extra, extra explanation to a particular client or something like that, it's best to keep it in a Google Docs. I'm doing it on a single output so that then I'm actually only working on one sheet. If I can do them onto separate ones, then I've got to go into each one individually and go and maybe do updates on those. And I'm saying is just do it onto a single output and you're going to do a mail merge and then give them all a different break, uh, a break page so that there's a break between them. And then I've got a destination folder with fairy choice. I'm not doing dynamic folder reference. This is if I wanted to split each one off individually. Now I could actually end up with a second one that would do this for me if I'd actually got all the things. So I could check it on one and then just run the thing again on a different one. So what it, what it's saying is do this, go and check it and create this. If the very first column which is the property name is not null so if, it, if, if it's a if, if the column has actually got a property in it then go and write the report on it now do I want to share the documents yes so I can actually link that document through to other people and then do I want to allow collaborators to do that and then I want to send it to them myself by an email just so that I do it. I want to send it to three or four people in the office because people are doing different parts of the whole process somebody might be doing the calculations somebody might be writing a header something there and then I've got triggers now I'm not doing triggers at the moment because I'm in a templating stage or testing stage at this point in time so I'm not running on an automated trigger what I'm doing is when I so on a time trigger or on a form trigger as in if I filled out an extra row do I then trigger it and do I make it send it off um, or do I do it on a time trigger do I do it every day or every hour or something like that so I'm just going to save this one here and uh, I can actually do these things run stuff if I actually had to do some extra calculations I can maybe come back in add some more data into fields inside the forms. This one, as I said, I, I can maybe put some information. Maybe I needed to know what the R value was, and the R value was 1.3 or something like that. So I needed to do that when I was back in the office. Now I can do the rest of the calculations and see whether it actually confirms whether it actually comes or not. So these are the ones that I can actually do through there. Then I can actually just go into the thing and I can run it from here. So this is a test run through here. And I actually done one run before here. So this is one where I've done it. So if we just go into the template, it's basically saying this is the property and it's calling the property name. Who's done it by that? But I can start bolding this up so that it jumps out a bit more at you. So if we just go and look at this report, it's the inspection on this property and that's the property. On the next sheet, it goes into the next line. On the next sheet, it goes into the next line, etc., etc. So when it runs this report, it's just running over this particular spreadsheet and it's just pulling out that data. So it's pulling out row by row the name of the property, the date when it was actually done by, the date when it was who it was done by, etc., etc., etc. So all of those things are coming through and it's doing one and it's just collating them into one sheet. So if I needed to add things or something like that, I can then split it off into separate ones or else I could end up having another autocrat which would do the same things with the same template but it would go and do a dynamic things where it put them into separate folders on each property and you could name that property folder by the property name or by the property code or something like that so it would then do this reporting for you. So I've now automated a process of going through and doing inspections. I've gathered information without actually having to fail about basically trying as much as possible to use pull downs. Um, to, to do things. There are times when you've actually got to fill in actual information or go and measure something or do something and you can give hints on to all of those to do it. But the notion of what I'm trying to do here is one do the gathering app and then doing a reporting app and trying to automate those processes together and also just the example of I've got everything all on one sheet because I'm just trying to do the test to see that I've got all of the parts of the workflow. I can then start breaking this down onto different things. Just just another little thing with the app that I'm doing as they go through and do inspections I'm actually creating a help file so that they can give an explanation what they should be looking for and also maybe I should be giving links to where the actual um, uh, code is so that if they need to go and check on a specific code compliance issue they can go and see what the actual regulation says so that they do it so as they're doing it if they're not completely certain they can actually have a note on it or have an ambiguity so 
that when they come back they can actually make sure that they're giving the right information that they need to. So anyway, I hope that's been of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, can you please give it a thumb up? Thank you very much.